I can do this. We can do this, right? Let's see what uh, questionable tool I use today. Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to my home studio, and welcome to welcome to the hand tool only build. Um, glossing over that entirely. At some point, not glossing over that. At some point, we're going to do a limited tool build, and uh, that will be limited by budget, limited by. Um, well, we'll figure it out moving forward, but I'm quite excited by that. Uh, with this instrument, though, we're going to plow on. Today, I am hoping to, uh, at the very least, get the fret slots cut, the shape of the neck sorted, the headstock figured out, and hell, I may even get on to inlays and, at a real push, carving the neck. I was, I'm going to use a knife to carve this neck, aren't I? I don't have any carving. I'm going to have to use a leather. I'm going to use my leather man. I'm going to use my leather man uh, to carve this neck. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if that's going to happen in this video, though. Uh, we shall see. Now, on with the show. Burn it. Ha <laughs> ha! Yay! Last week we burnt it. Uh, this week, this week we cut, we shape, we make some sawdust. Oh, and happy Christmas. This has been drying for, oh, about a week now actually. There's been a lot of other, other stuff going on. I haven't burnt the sides, I'm gonna have to stay in that. I, I'm not sure how much of this flamed finish is going to stay in the in the final build. We'll see what happens with the inlaying. That's going to abrade some of it away. Um, I'm not getting covered in uh, in soot, etc. Even without any finish on, so uh, that's not going to be a long-term issue. I suspect stain is going to have to be involved, and the fire was just a bit of fun. If you're watching this before the 12th of January 2022, do not forget that we've currently got a major, major giveaway slash raffle uh, competition slash raising money for GGBO 22 going on. Check the video linked in the description below and uh, uh, yeah, go and check it out. It is gonna be awesome. There's a, uh, more than a few goodies uh, that could potentially be winging your way, including two whole guitars that I've built. Gonna be cool. All right, that's the last fret. I've made this Cupid's bow longer than it is on the plan, which is potentially actually gonna cause me some trouble with the positioning of the sound hole, because I wanted that and that to be the same distance. So I'm gonna need to adjust that. Ooh. One of you told me that I needed to uh, to add an inlay to the first fret as well, and I think I agree with you.
This is, um, this is not the <laughs> easiest thing in the world to control. I'm going to, I'm going to look for another brace. Mm. Time to dig into the tool collection, I think. Uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm drilling a hole that's the right size. The, <clears throat> the headstock is, the headstock is much thicker than it's going to be. Now, generally when I'm dr drilling a headstock, you want to drill from one side and then in from the other and meet in the middle. That stops any potential blowout or uh, issues. I'm not worried about that because the headstock is still uh, much thicker than it's going to be in the end. So any such blowouts are going to be carved away. I've got some ultimatum braces in here, all needing repair. No. Oh. You. <laughs> okay, all right. Actually, this one's in perfect nick, I think. I think I've kept it so that I can copy the bits that required for the next. Ah. So easily distracted. Hi. This has been kept so that I can uh, copy it, basically. I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying this actually. This is, um, uh, I never considered actually keeping one of these drills to use. You need to have some serious force behind you. And I probably, even with this thickness should be going from either side. Um, but, uh, yeah, fun. Beautiful. <laughs> and we've got more than enough space to remove the excess there. Alrighty. Now, onwards uh, <laughs> with some more sawing. I'm going to have to practice my uh, sawing techniques, but uh, this is going to be a little bit easier.
Now this is where it gets a little bit more difficult. If I had left the headstock without wings, uh, then I could just take a hand plan and go straight across, make it perfectly flat and be done. At this stage, I'm going to have to plane as much as I can because planes are amazing. And then in this area, use rasps and files and straight edges to make sure that it is straight. I need to be absolutely certain that I'm not going to mess it up. So instead of the, the knife line, the scribe line, I'm going to use some masking tape. Uh, something to look out for when uh, looking at handmade guitars, if you want to see the, the, if you want to check the quality of what you're looking at, uh, that, if that is not straight, it's because somebody's done this and hasn't done it very well. It's subtle, but uh, a good indicator of other problems later on down the line. We're getting there. So. Fred slots, maybe Fred slots. No, measure, measure, cut. A little bit more planning. I'm going to hit it with a leveling beam and that just shows me just exactly where we're at uh, straightness wise. Done. Done. <laughs> Perfect. Ross. It's an inside ground gouge, so it's flat on the back, much easier. No, I, I don't have 24 inch scale length on the Crimson Guitars fret ruler because it's not a common scale length. This is going to be marked out by hand, of course. Hold on, hold on. Uh, you people wanted a kit version of this guitar. And I have some of the initial bits and pieces. Prototyping is going uh, underway. There's, um, we can actually cut the inlays on the laser cutter, can you believe it? Or at least uh, the, the cavities. So uh, this is now, this is now live to pre-order. It's live to pre-order. This is now live to pre-order on at crimsonguitars.com. The link is in the description below. Uh, we are uh, happy with, uh, with the price. It's going to be a lot less expensive uh, than I thought it was because we're able to use the laser cutter for so much, which is taking uh, a lot of the time of the way. Uh, I've also managed to uh, uh, buy a beautiful wide belt thickness sander that's going to make this just better. So uh, yeah, link in the description below. Uh, there are various options, which is why I'm not talking about the price. There are various options of uh, inlays and uh, timbers and bits and pieces that vary it slightly, but uh, 
you'll be impressed. Click the link. And thank you for your support. Uh, now, strange scale length by hand. Yay. Now, when marking frets out uh, by hand, you need to tape your ruler down to the, to the fretboard. Don't let this move. That would be chaotic and uh, not funny. So what we've got is I'm drawing out where the fret slots are. I can look at that and say, yeah, that looks right, which takes practice. But um, I'm then using the Crimson Protractor, which is freaking gorgeous, as well as drawing the line, I'm also making the the first cut with the scalpel. It's just saving me a little bit of time. I do trust that they're in the right place. I trust that I'm doing this correctly. I also know that if I'm not, the cut is almost certainly going to be underneath the fret. It's a risk. Do what I say, not what I do. So once the primary cut has been made, it's very easy. The, the blade just follows the initial slices. This is now going to have the exact same effect on my saw as I'm cutting the fret slots. Uh, here we go. That's just going to at least start by following the knife, well, knife wall, to quote Paul Sellers, but uh, this is the way to do it. I use masking tape on the one side of the uh, Crimson Fret Slotting Saw to mark my depth. We do have depth stops that uh, sit on the side, uh, like this. Uh, it's They are industry standard. I just prefer something that thin. So uh, maybe we should make them thinner. Hmm. Let me know in the comments. It's always better to cut a fret slot into a curved surface. Cutting a flat fretboard means your saw is cutting the whole length and it's not, it's not as easy. These saws cut on the pull. So I'm sitting here trying to figure out what my next step needs to be. Uh, I need to create purfling. This is very thin strips of mahogany and I'm gonna have to stain some of them, leave the rest. Hell, I might even bleach some and stain some. And that to me sounds like an entire video on its own, just a standalone episode <laughs> 4.1 or whatever it happens to be at this point. Uh, now I normally, fret a neck in this stage when it's relatively rough. I would normally cut off more of the excess, but um, I'm also interested to see what happens to this uh, as I remove that much material. There is still a chance that it might move. Uh, we don't have any issues with that at the moment. It's good, nice, solid, all well and good. Are you spotting me looking up at the screen behind you? I'm sorry, I'm still getting used to that setup. <sighs> Check the live stream on Crimson Guitars Extras on Sunday evenings. Uh, this most recent one uh, will be enlightening. I've got a very cool new setup here. Yeah. I think I'm going to carve a neck earlier than I normally would. It's going to make the fretting a little bit more difficult just because the neck's going to be a little bit more wobbly. But there are people that do this and this is the method they choose, so we're all good. We're all good. Yes, the time has come to actually use this. I think. Do I want to cut on the pull? That doesn't feel like enough tension, so. Oh, this feels better. Hmm, maybe sideways. I 
I really don't know how to use this. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think I should do? Um, leave space, that's what I think. All right, so we're gonna start. No, okay, no, that's weird. Okay, so it's not gonna act like that. Let's get our block and clamp it to the bench. Oh, that immediately feels better, all right. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, there was a little bit of work. There was work. There was not a balance saw. But actually, with a well set up bow saw like this, a bandsaw could actually be made obsolete. There's something pretty satisfying about doing it by hand. All right. I'm convinced. I think I'm gonna keep this one. Only, uh, only a little bit of blood. Never have your hand in front of a sharp tool. Always behind. I'm humbled. Okay, so it's important to start with the neck being exactly flat on the back and the final dimensions that I want. And I'm, I'm nearly there. Perfect. So I'm using the zero point there. It's a center finding ruler. Okay. Half. So that's halfway between the bottom of the fretboard and the uh, and the back of the flat bit. 
Okay, so this is my day to day. It's a, a titanium, um, it's a titanium leather man charge, and I absolutely this is, yeah, uh, I am, I must say, now sponsored by Leatherman, which is amazing because I've been wearing one for the last twenty odd years. But uh, I've got something in my camera bag that actually. Maybe the better blade for this. So um, here we go. <laughs> Come on. This one. That's a chunky blade. This is the Leatherman Free K4. And uh, yeah, let's see. And uh, I might need a slightly more curved knife at some point as well. Okay, so the grain's going that way. <laughs> Here's our joint. So the grain here is going that way and the grain here is going that way. Typical, any device. This is actually, it could be designed for the faceting system that we use. It's, it's great fun. Uh, it's nice and quiet as well. I'm, it's very much the end of the day. I'm gonna come back and uh, carry on with this carving tomorrow. The process is literally, you create a facet, then you bisect that facet, then you bisect that facet, and you end up with a nice curve. And uh, it's really, by far the easiest way to get a nice curve um, that I've ever come across that <laughs> doesn't involve a CNC machine. And uh, the knife, apart from the, uh, the grain direction issue that I've got with the fact that I put the wood for the uh, headstock in the wrong way, or not the wrong way, but a way that is making life difficult. Now, other than that, it's perfect. So uh, I'm going to dig out my other smaller Leatherman that's got a, a nice curved blade and uh, I'll see how that does uh, in these areas. And uh, yeah, I, I was thinking that I might need to invest in some carving knives, but I don't think I need to. This could have been designed for the job. So at this stage, another day, I've come in late in the evening because I fancy it to finish carving this neck. I'm very much looking forward to getting the, uh, the little headstock areas sorted. That's gonna, be, that's gonna be fun. I might need a gouge in there, maybe. Um, I'm, not gonna let, I'm not gonna let choosing to use just a Leatherman uh, affect the quality of, of the tool or at least just a knife, affect the quality of the final guitar. Um, but uh, yeah, something like that. First of all though, I need to bisect the rest of these and carry on carving with a knife. Or do I need to remove that? I think I need to remove that, come to think of it. I need a more curved blade here 
So out comes my Leatherman Free T4. This is, this is one of the two Leatherman tools that I carry with me all the time. Uh, the reason I do, well, it's a fantastic little tool, but uh, it's also got the best scissors I have ever had on a multi-tool ever. But it's also got a much greater curve on the blade. So that should, <laughs> it's almost, almost as if it was designed for this job. Like butter. Okay, I am semi going against the grain there, which isn't a good idea. All right, that's a start. Now I can do some bisecting. That's there, and I'm marking halfway in between each of these facets. So what I want to do is bisect that and carve that away as well. Back to the bigger, bigger tool. Now my grain, I've got a weird grain coming up into here. Ah, it really is. I could have chosen wood that worked with me rather than against me. Where would the fun be in that though? That's just the best bit, just carving in there. Okay, so I'm gonna, using my finger as a depth guide, just draw along the bottom of the fretboard. Fretboard's a little bit thicker than I would normally go. And normally, of course, you can actually see much easier what your fretboard is or where it is. But this time, we don't have that luxury. Now we're going for a fairly D-shaped neck this time. And then after the fact, I'm gonna assess what I think about it and uh, and adjust that's interesting i actually find myself i'm, I'm riding the bevel of uh, of the knife here and i find it much more comfortable pulling i seem to have more control nearly there so we've got a fairly fairly chunky shape uh, which I kind of want to a certain extent for the travel guitar. I want as much material as there as possible, but uh, I'm gonna have to bisect this one curve one more time. And I'm actually gonna have a guitar that I could just leave like that and I would be comfortable playing it still. Why not? I'm gonna actually use my, uh, my uh, actual Leatherman multi-tool. This is, uh, this is uh, Autosol Chrome Polish on a little leather strop with knives with the uh, with the double bevel on it. I actually find it a lot easier to control the strop rather than move the blade. I there is no right way. The only right way is the way that works and uh, and works well. Anyway, I use this knife a lot, so it does need a little bit of a touch-up. So you can see how that's gonna make a big difference to the feel. Okay, so this is working well as a pull. That's also got a nice curve for doing that. I do think I prefer, yeah, I prefer this one in there. Yeah, we've got our cross grain weirdness again. So it's at this angle that it's weird. <laughs> There's a saw on this as well. Hmm. Okay, I did that as a joke. I definitely did that as a joke. So I'm cutting the turkey. Huh. No, 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 no. Knife it is. You'll notice that uh, at m as much as possible, I've got both hands on the knife and uh, it just gives you an element or a further element of control. Let's watch my fingers under your hair, yeah? <laughs> One, I know where my hand is. 
two. I'm running my hand along the bottom of the, of, of the neck and uh, yeah, it's like mountain climbing. Not that you will ever see me climbing a mountain, but uh, yeah, multiple points of contact at all times. Rather important. Anyway, I think we are almost, almost there. Uh, <clears throat> I must say, happy Christmas. Uh, this video is going live. If you're watching it on day one, then uh, what are you doing? You're supposed to be with your families. <clears throat> Unless you're avoiding your families, in which case, I understand. Um, I can see how much fun it would be to carve a neck with a knife if you've got the right piece of wood. And if you weren't silly enough to put in a scarf joint uh, that would just fuzz up everything. Uh, but I've now got, just through making a few facets, I've now got a neck that is perfectly comfortable. It's, it's exactly what I want. And you can, you can go to infinity. Let's play around here a little bit more. The smaller blade here actually works, well, of course it works better in, in Curse because it's a smaller blade. Anyway, I'm going to call that a day and I'm going to call it a success. Um, I did actually end up needing all three Leatherman tools. I've got the Charge, the T4 and the K4, I think it is. Yep, the K4. And uh, they all had their uses within the different uh, shapes and facets of this neck. Would I choose to carve a neck with a knife of any sort as my standard go-to normal everyday choice? No, probably not. Uh, if I was on a desert island, though, I have already publicly said that the one tool that I would take would be my Leatherman. And uh, I would, of course, be building guitars. Let me know in the comments below what you think I would have to use for the strings. I'm thinking coconut bark has fibers in it. Coconuts do. What could I do? What is my desert island guitar making regimen to look like? Uh, anyway, that's enough. Um, I am, of course, going to rasp and file the final shape in. Uh, I've still got a slightly faceted neck here. I'm going to do some sanding and all of that jazz, and that is going to be in the next episode. Uh, I've got inlays to do. I've, hell, I've got a whole guitar to build. Uh, now, it is Christmas Day. The, the actual kit has just launched for pre-order on the Crimson Guitars website with various different options available to you if you are interested in this. We will be sending out an email to the to the <laughs> hell of a lot of you who uh, uh, registered an interest when I first started this build um, one episode ago. But uh, yeah, more will come. Click like, subscribe. Uh, go and subscribe to the Extras channel where I do live streams, including everything you've just seen with me wearing this shirt. And uh, most importantly, go and make some sawdust. Stay cool. See you soon. Goodbye.